They're calling for comprehensive health care for every American, and Mayor Bill de Blasio just announced he's making it happen for all New Yorkers, including undocumented immigrants. He's here to tell us how he did it and what the White House can learn from it. Please welcome Mayor Bill de Blasio. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here. Well, you made quite a bit of news last week when you announced that New York City will now guarantee yeah. health care to anyone who needs it, including 300,000 undocumented immigrants at the cost of $100 million. Mm -hmm. But what do you say to people who say they don't want to pay for the undocumented? Okay, let me tell you why we're doing it first, and then I'll answer that. Okay. Everyone should have a right to health care. Here's the idea. Everyone should have a right to health care. It should be universal, and if it's universal, people will actually go and get the health care they need when they need it, not end up in an emergency room. Let's face it, the emergency room is the family doctor now for millions and millions of Americans. And tax dollars pay for it. And a lot tax of that. dollars right. pay for it. It is expensive, it's backwards, and it means people get really, really sick before they ever seek help. If you have a guarantee of health care, no matter who you are, you get a primary care doctor assigned to you, you have the ability to get all the other care you need. You need maternity care, OBGYN, you need pediatrics, you need mental health services, whatever it is, if you have access to it, you will actually get the health care you need when you need it. What's the problem in this city, in this country? It's hard to get the health care you need. It's too expensive. Do you think it's expensive to get health care in this country? I agree with you. But if we make it universal and straightforward, then people get the care they need when they need it. So we said very simply two things. One, we got about 600,000 people in this city who have no health care coverage at all. That's as many people as in the city of Milwaukee. Wow. No health care coverage at all. They get sicker, sicker, sicker with no care. So we said, one, if you're eligible for insurance, but you haven't gotten it because you couldn't navigate the exchange because it was too expensive, because you were young and you thought you were invincible and you'd never get sick, we're going to make it easier than ever. We're going to make it cheaper than ever. We're going to make it the kind of plan that's user-friendly, 24-hour number you can call any problem, get directed to the doctor you need on the spot. Mm -hmm. That is our public option. That's a way that the city will provide an opportunity for health insurance. Second, if you're undocumented, and that's several hundred thousand New Yorkers who are our neighbors who contribute to our economy, they're undocumented. If they don't get health care, if they get sick, everyone gets sick. If the whole community isn't healthy, then we all suffer. So we're saying to them, we're going to give you a health care card. You're going to get a primary care doctor. When you need help, you get help. When your kids need help, you get help for them. And the whole community gets health care. I don't want someone who is part of the backbone of our economy, and that's the blunt reality in this country. Undocumented immigrants are part of our economy. I don't want them going to work sick and getting everyone else sick. I don't want their kids suffering. I want to make sure everyone's healthy, and if it's universal, everyone but has But you understand people are saying, I don't want my taxpayer dollars They're paying for it. You know what? The, the, uh, the, uh, exactly. I just pay emergency me now, rooms. Pay me now or pay but are you later. concerned yeah. about abuse? Mm. Like, people abusing the program, none of these programs are perfect. You know, it's, it's a lot of... We're living in a city with a number of challenges. I ride the subway home every day, yes. and the homelessness is heartbreaking. And so if you have people that are flocking here, because I'm assuming they will, to get free health care, how do you pay for all that? How do you manage that in this city? Abby, very fair question. I don't think people will flock here. We, we're a city like a number of places in this country that try to do a lot to support people. We have not seen that influx over time of people coming here. You know, where we've seen the homelessness problem is in warmer environments. People go to the West Coast, they go to the places that are warm when but they... the state's gone up 50 percent, almost 50 percent since 2007. But here's the bottom line. People need health care, and if we provide it, we think we end up with a better, stronger society, a healthier society, and we save a lot of money in the end, to Joy's point. Mm. Right now, we're hemorrhaging money because we're giving health care the Can backwards way. Can I ask just way. one quick question, just yeah. super simple? Do you mm -hmm. think the VA has run well, and it's a great medical organization? No, of course not. That's a government-run health care. That's a federal government-run health care. And you, don't, and you think there's a difference between what's going to happen in New York and what's Yeah, because in the VA. we're closer to and the ground. And by the way, veterans died waiting to get health care. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's unconscionable. And we're closer to the ground, and we're accountable to our own people. And our public health system is working better so and better. You know, you, sound, you know what? You sound like a Republican a little bit, because they believe in small government, and you're saying do it on a local level. You're starting to sound like a Republican. Well, Joe, I know you mean it's that in the best the way. Government <laughs> doing it. Well, I mean, it's still I think the it's government great running it. It's I, not I believe we should have a single-payer system. I believe we should have Medicare for all. But until we do, we have to take care of all our people. Well, and, and people are having uh, trouble making ends meet. We need to help them get help there. So, I like all of that. That all sounds good. You know what's really pissing me off? What? Uh-oh. I've never heard you pissed off before. <laughs> <laughs> no, you actually haven't. <laughs> You've built 83 miles of protected bike lanes, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, <laughs> 
That woman is. And I like bikes. I like people who ride, but. I don't think you understand the impact of taking something like 10th Avenue, which is six uh, lanes, yeah. down to two and a half, particularly when you have a winter storm and you can't move. None of that is movable, so you can't get, the, nothing flows. Mm -hmm. Also, I am upset that you love these bikes, but you don't tell people to put a helmet on. Oh, yeah. We tell children to put helmets on. Well, this, is, this is an issue. And, and, you know, you haven't taken down the size of the trucks, so a giant truck that is bringing food to New York, which is, you know, we got nine block long trucks delivering, <laughs> and they can't make the turns. What, what feasibility study did y'all do when you decided to put these in, because I know a lot of places, they're, I noticed they're not on Madison <laughs> Avenue, and they're not on Park Avenue. They're all over, Whoopi, respectfully. They're, they're no, all they're not. Over. They're, yes, they're yes, actually, yes. they're not on Park and they're not on Madison. They're not on every avenue for specific reasons, but uh, they're all over the city in every kind the of neighborhood. The audience is mutinating. Listen. They say, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the right. audience of New York are saying no. Here, here's the bottom line. Yeah. The number one reason we have done this is a specific strategy we call Vision Zero. It is to reduce the number of traffic crashes and fatalities. We had, this last year in New York City, the fewest traffic fatalities since 1910. Uh-huh. Oh. We had the fewest well, traffic fatalities. Well, there weren't any Well, this is the amazing thing. <laughs> that was a no, tricky. That was tricky. It's <laughs> not tricky. It's not tricky because uh -huh. in 1910, there were more horses than cars uh, in New York oh, City. Yeah, horse, Every year horse since horse then, mm -hmm. the traffic fatalities went up and up. We brought it back down to the level of 1910 because these bike lanes But you screwed down the city traffic. up. Well, no. it's not just... Wait, no, but listen, it, listen. Well, but you, it, listen, you go through the city with a, with a police escort. I come in every day. <laughs> I, I come in every day. <laughs> And I find that because you can't make a turn anywhere, you can't go straight anywhere, when there's a storm, people can't move anywhere because you got all these medians in the way. And I'm just saying, you might want to take a look at some of this because now you have Cuomo coming in talking about congestion pricing, and I kind of feel like it's a setup. <laughs> And she does complain about it every day. Every day. Yeah. We get it's very genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Are you it's running in 2020? Genuine. I'm mayor of New York City. That's what I'm focused on. That's All not right. an answer. <laughs> it is. It is. Thanks yeah. to Mayor Bill de Blasio. We'll be right back. <laughs> That's